All right. Is the hobby going to die from the inside out? I hope not. Welcome back to the channel, friends and family. My name is Gary. I'm the card father, and you are, have entered into the no scan zone. Yes, that's right. This is the no scan zone. I'm saying that because today's video literally refers to everything and everything and everything that everybody is talking about. Yes, that stupid, stupid concept of scanning your cards. I'm telling you guys, listen, scanning your cards, I mean, go for it if you want. But let me jump in. I'm going to give you my 10 cents, whether you ask for it or not, about scanning your cards and kind of my thoughts about that and what it's going to happen. But before I do, please make sure that you like Comment and subscribe down below. I love to communicate with you. I love to reach out. And you can ask anybody. I do respond back, unlike some of those other PokeTubers who never respond to you in any form or fashion. I don't think they ever look at the comment sections whatsoever. So please, like, comment, subscribe down below. All right, here it is, guys. Scanning your cards. Now, if you're not familiar with this, check out this video and this video and this video right here. Uh, because these videos, these creators, all created contents. When this broke about a week ago, um, you've started to see these things pop up and now it's all over the Facebook forums and you and groups and people are just like, oh, you're going to scan your cards. Well, you know, it's a possibility if you wanted to. But here's the thing. Um, yeah, this is hot topic news. Pokebeats brought it out. It's been in a couple of news articles I've read about how this is possible. So let me give you the quick like 10, 20 second rundown about how this happened and where it's headed and what, we're, what I'm thinking. So uh, this company, won't name it, name it, but you can look it up on the Pokebeach uh, information. You can look it up. This company... Uh, was doing case studies because they do CT scans for mechanical equipment and for uh, flight equipment and for like space equipment. Okay. And you have to know within like the most minute nanometers, like if there's something off, like if a seal's not going to work or if there's a manu like a manufacturer defect or a crack in something that could be detrimental and it could kill somebody. So this company, what they do is they take these big pieces and parts and they scan them through CT so they can get an idea of what they're seeing. Now, CT scanner is like an x-ray machine, basically. It just scans the layers, can scan through a bunch of different materials. There's only a few that it can't do. And from that point forward, you can see the defects. You can see what's behind something else. Amazing technology. We've had this for a long time. But the difference here is that they were building a case study. And in the case study, they went ahead and scanned a pack of Pokemon cards, a vintage pack of Pokemon cards. Now, I'm going to preface the rest of what I say from this point forward with this one comment. This was planned. Yes, I just said that. This was planned. It was strictly planned. I highly believe that this company had this entirely in their boat about what they were going to do and why they were going to do it and how they were going to pull it off. And let me give you the reasons why. So if you read the article at Poke Beach or you, or you look up the news about this, um, these guys put out this case study. Oh, we didn't know this was going to happen. Oh, we were just, we were just thinking it would be good. We didn't intend to break the market or, or ruin collecting, but I think they did because this is a new way to determine what your packs are going to contain. Now we've had this before. Okay. Anything from Watsy all the way to 2012, we had all of these from 1999 to 2012, where you were able to weigh those packs. You were able to take a base set pack and wonder, am I going to get a hollow in it? Yeah. Because the pack weighs 21 plus grams and a normal pack would weigh less than 20 or 20 in, in total. So that's the thing. We've had this ability to kind of guess or to like cheat the system and everybody's going to cheat the system at some point or another. But this company went a little further. They decided we're going to look inside the pack without actually opening the pack of Pokemon cards. And they did so. Took a vintage pack, found a Charizard, right? Okay. So in that scope, in doing so, they have set the internets ablaze you know, fire with all of, of the speculation and how they're doing it. But here's the kicker. The next day, if you go to their website and you click on services, you look the next day, I promise you, they had the CT card scanning service available. They're charging an arm and leg for it, quite honestly. They want you to send in your pack of vintage Pokemon cards or Pokemon cards in general and get it scanned for $75, 75 bucks. $75 for you to go in and get the scan. Now, I'm just going to say this. Take it or leave it. It's planned. It's ridiculous to pay for that. But wherever you land on this, I don't know if this is actually going to hurt the hobby. Let me give you my reasons. Here we go. 
here's the one side. You got the folks who are like, this is dangerous. It's going to hurt the hobby. It's going to damage collecting and investors are never going to make their money back. How am I going to do I'm going to sell my entire collection. You could be that person. Or you could be this guy. I just don't know. No, I don't think it's going to hurt at all. It's not a problem. You know, everything's cool. You know, it's all right, man. Not a big deal. Uh, just move on as normal. Okay. You can be that guy. I fall in the middle here. I think that for high-end buyers, now we're talking like the Post Malones, the Jake and Logan Pauls, um, you know, the Barack Obamas, maybe. I don't know if he collects Pokemon cards. We're, we're talking about these guys, these people who can afford to buy a $14,000 box of Fossil or spend $700 on a single pack of vintage base set Pokemon cards. I don't know, like, in full, if this is going to be a detriment to anything in the modern space. I think in the vintage tailoring, it will. It'll be a little bit, it'll be, it'll be a major challenge. I think it will harm the fact that somebody could take a full booster box, a base set booster box, crack it, pay $75 a pack, get them scanned, right? Bring them back. And then now they're going to be able to sell that because they know what's in it. And they're going to upcharge that pack from $700, which rightly so, $650, $700 for a pack of vintage Pokemon, um, base set maybe. And they're going to then exorbitantly charge over the moon because this card, this one has got first edition Shadowless Charizard, right? That Charizard alone is a $10,000 card. You go and get it graded. It's money in the bank, okay? But what I'm telling you is that through the scanning software, they're going to know. They're going to know it. They're going to know what they've got. They're going to charge for it. They're going to say it was scanned, and here's the proof. You know, these people, uh, this company is going to give you a certificate of authenticity. They're going to tell you, hey, this is legit, right? And here's the scans to prove it. I think you're going to see that happen more and more with vintage stuff. You and I, like you and I, we're not going out. We're not buying fifteen thousand dollar boxes of fossil or 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 neo destinies or gym Ch uh, challenge or gym trainer right we're not we're not doing that we're not dropping maybe maybe if we had 700 bucks we'd splurge on a collector item piece which would be a base set pack of pokemon cards because guarantee you're not going to crack that i wouldn't crack it i'd set it back here on the shelf somewhere maybe get it graded that'd be dope and you've probably seen my video uh about that you know spinning around the internets it's up here in the corner if you want to take a look but uh, about what grading means. I, it's up here. Um, it's just one of those things. Like, I think it could be detrimental to the vintage side of the collecting. Now, modern side, psh, <laughs> that ain't happening, man. That ain't happening. I'm I'm gonna be straight up honest with you. I'm gonna be like 100% legit with you. Edit that ain't happening. You know, nobody nobody is taking this uh the, this Santa Conda V. They're not taking this Santa Conda V. Uh, seriously, they're not going to take the pack that this comes in and vintage and look for this card. Okay. Now the only exception to modern cars that I would say that is the case. The only exception is going to be evolving skies. Um, I think somebody would buy a pack of evolving skies for 15 bucks, pay the additional 75, which make it $90, send it out to double check to see if there's an Umbreon in it. And then scan that pack, sell that pack for $700 because it has an Umbreon in it. I think that could happen. But that's the only modern set that I would think that that would happen with. Um, you're not going to do that with a Monkey Dory out of Twilight Masquerade. You're not looking for the Radiant Greninja right now, you know, either. Um, I don't think that's going to happen with modern cards. I do not think that this is a complete detriment to the collecting side of TCGs. But I will say this. I don't think it's good either. Um, and Pokemon, guys, Pokemon doesn't care either. Like, he's got... Pokemon, if you don't understand the hierarchy of how this works, you need to learn a little bit. Pokemon makes the products. They sell it to, to distributors. They sell it at a rate through distributors that makes them 5, 6x on what they spent to make those cards. And, I mean, last year alone, they produced 12 billion, yes, with a B, billion cards 12 billion cards. You divide that by 10 and whatever sets came out. I mean, that's that's quite a lot of cards. The thing is, is that I don't think po Pokemon's made their money. They sell it to distributors and distributors sells it to us and we sell it to the masses. That's the line. That's the, how the hierarchy goes. 
So Pokemon is not going to do anything about this until it becomes a massive issue. When would it become a massive issue? When we have scanner technology that's the size of your phone, when you can go out and spend $75 on a CT or an x-ray machine that is the size of your phone, we would probably then have a problem, a big problem. And that's the, that's the kicker here. Uh, we don't. Buying an x-ray machine costs thousands upon thousands upon thousands, and even more than that. It could be millions upon millions of dollars to own a CT x-raying machine. Now, the day that somebody figures out how to make this the size of a phone and starts marketing it for $150, bucks, $200, for $300, that's, that's when we're going to have a problem. But you also have to have permits to operate a CT machine. You have to be trained how to read one and how to operate one. So I don't really think this is going to be a mass community issue. And I think we're all just kind of like in shock and awe that it's even possible. Like, dang, I didn't know you could do that with Pokemon cards. And then now what you're starting to see is people are freaking out about it. They're like putting up on Facebook groups and Reddit streams. They're like, well, you know, these, these are definitely unweighed and unscanned. No, Deb Sherlock, you don't have a scanner. There's no way that average Joe from average Joe's gym has got a scanner and he's sitting there scanning his silver tempest for that Lugia V. There's no way. So I don't think, again, it's going to be detrimental as we think it is. I think for the vintage community, absolutely, it could be a, a, a big problem, especially if you're you know a collector and you're getting upcharged you know, 10, 20 X on a vintage pack of Pokemon cards because you're just buying it for your collection. Um, and now the guy's like, yep, well, you know, this has got that first edition of Shadowless Charizard in it. Uh, it's a $20,000 pack of cards. I think that could be detrimental. I think that could be a problem. But on the modern side, not going to happen, guys. Not going to happen. You know what does matter? Checking out CardFatherTCG.com, where you can buy a lot of really cool stuff. I have a lot of great things. Everything's updated weekly. Good inventory, good prices. I promise you won't miss out on your next Chase card at my website. So go check it out, CardFatherTCG.com. And I say this in every video, friends. Every time, and I'll say it to the day I die, you can do all things through Christ who gives you strength. Keep training on, and I'll see you in the next one. All right.